Hello everyone, and welcome to a short episode in my Galileo 6.4x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. Uh, this covers the end of the first live stream, and that's why it's a bit shorter, because I ended up doing something completely different at the start of the next live stream, and so I couldn't just go on to that. But the goal here is to send a Kerbal into space, and then also get a Kerbal into orbit. And so you can see me setting up. We're going to try and recover the rocket. It's a very simple rocket with fins, LVT-45, and we're going to recover the capsule separately. So here we go with Jebediah Kerman. There's, of course, a single-stage rocket just getting to suborbital flight. This is similar to Mercury Redstone 3 with Alan Shepard. And uh, Jeb, Jeb and Alan Shepard sort of remind me of each other. I, I feel like they're, they're very similar. Here we're going through the clouds and past the speed of sound. I had only a vague idea how high this would go, and so as the apoapsis got into space, you can see 155, 56 kilometers there, I decided to shut it down and let it go because we don't want to go too high, otherwise coming down will be even harsher. So I just, uh, I just let go of the core stage, and we started to do our business with the science. The mystery goo uh, turned out to be a little bit superfluous as far as the upper atmosphere was concerned, but of course the space stuff is good. And uh, crew report. Yep. Very good. Uh, we can't EVA just yet. We haven't upgraded that building yet. Temperature scan we also had. So here it is coming back down. And again if we had gone higher up it would be coming down much faster. Uh, here it's hitting the thicker part of the atmosphere at 1,400 meters per second, which should be safe. But, you know, it's uh, still very serious acceleration there. We don't want our Kerbals to face too much acceleration. And now below the speed of sound, 10 kilometers in altitude. I really need to get my standard Mechjeb set up here. Uh, I haven't got that in. For some reason, MechJib isn't really keeping the windows the way that I leave them. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, parachute deployment. And... What's our velocity? Six meters per second or so. Alright. So, good times. Jeb looks fine. And we can recover and get him ready for the orbital mission. I did decide that I would risk Jeb again. I'm trying to keep Jeb alive, I swear, but I, I do insist that uh, Jeb be the first one at risk, <laughs> I guess. Uh, don't worry, uh, Valentina will have missions ahead of her. Uh, I've already done those live streams, so I know. Now the thing about designing this rocket is, once again, I wanted to recover as much of it as possible. And you can see me working on recovering the service module, or the last stage to get into orbit. And also, it's the same stage that will bring the capsule back down, right? It'll do the retro burn. But I wanted to recover that stage, because it will be coming down anyway. So I've got a heat shield on it, I put a controller on it, and parachutes. You can see I've moved the parachutes on it. I decided to do a little bit of extra science here. Uh, to unlock general rocketry on the tech tree, so that's why I'm doing this uh, with Jeb here. The EVA report from the launch pad and all that basic stuff. And uh, general rocketry is that one right there. And so we just need a little bit more to unlock that. That gave us some more possibilities, including these interesting SRBs. I don't know which pack these are from, but these are supposed to be based on real SRBs. The Mu first stage SRB. And those are H2 SRBs uh, from the Japanese H2 rocket. So they're, they're sort of fancy. They're not better than the liquid engines as far as ISP is concerned. They're not really weird. But they're better than the stock SRBs, that's for sure. As far as ISP in particular. Not thrust necessarily. I'll have to take a look at that. But uh, yeah, they are fancy. I decided to replace the Mu SRB with just a liquid engine. And this is the rocket we went with. You can see the high thrust weight ratio thanks to the SRBs, but we're still running the center engine at full thrust because otherwise it won't have enough thrust weight ratio when we separate the SRBs. We are trying to recover as many stages as possible, that's one of our design challenges. So the SRBs I wanted to recover, uh, the core stage I also wanted to recover, you might be able to spot the parachutes on that. Um, I thought that that was the last uh, stage that we would be able to recover without some sort of heat shielding. The center stage is the tough one because 
it's going so fast you need heat shielding to recover it, but there's no good way to place that heat shielding uh, convincingly. Uh, so that leaves the service module at the top, the final stage, which we can recover, and then the capsule, which obviously we definitely want to recover. Uh, but yeah, for the, a lot of these rockets, the middle stage is going to be discarded. The eventual solution, of course, is not to have a middle stage, and simply to have a lot of Delta V in the upper stage. And we could accomplish that with a very efficient upper stage. Perhaps the Terrier engine would work out, we haven't unlocked that yet. But something with that kind of ISP might help. Um, I don't know how far we can push the recovery of the first stage. Uh, eventually, stage recovery will indicate that, that, it, that it's going too fast and it's going to burn up. So this is the middle stage. You can see I still have parachutes on it. I still wanted to try, but uh, it, it doesn't work. I, I'm pretty sure it gets destroyed by stage recovery. That's the end of the second stage, and we are in space right now. Unfortunately, we don't have enough Delta V to make orbit, and I realized that I had checked the Delta V stats already. And so the service module, uh, well, we're, we're sort of in a pickle here. And I decide that the best thing to do would be to not aim for orbit since we don't have enough delta V for it, and instead to retro burn to slow down and uh, put Jeb on a safer suborbital trajectory. Otherwise, the G forces and the heating will be quite harsh. You can see we're uh, definitely coming down right now. And I separate the surface module. The surface module still has fuel left in, of course. But we just weren't able to burn enough of it off in time. But now we're coming down much faster than on the previous suborbital flight. 2,500, 2,600 meters per second before we hit the thicker power of the atmosphere. And so G-Force is building up. And we'll see how Jeb does. Obviously we're going to end this episode without having gotten a Kerbal into orbit. And so that will be something that will happen in the next episode and happened in the next live stream. But in the next live stream, I started out with trying to do a satellite contract sort of thing. Uh, getting together a rocket that could launch satellites for contract purposes. So uh, after that, I went back to trying to launch a Kerbal into orbit. Alright, we have initial parachute deployment. Everything looks good for Jeb. Uh, everything held out. Uh, there's a lot of uh, extra ablator. We could get rid of some ablator and save some mass on the rocket. That could be helpful as far as getting Jeb into orbit in the future. Definitely didn't need quite so much ablator. Well, we didn't actually get all the way to orbit though, so it's tough to say. We might want to be cautious about that. It is a much bigger planet than Kerbin after all. Alright, and so Jeb's recovered safely. No additional science, but I believe Jeb did receive a few more ribbons. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.